Everything the Infiniti QX50. Everything you need, no matter the ones, The ones grown by dad. The ones grown by She could die. That is a possibility. And wait for it. Thank you, Ryan. Final playoff tune-up for theater package. If two kickoffs are returned all the way for touchdowns in this game, you could also win a million bucks. Good luck, Bo. Off to the nation's capital now for the season finale. Red Black Sal's Chris Cuthbert and Dwayne Ford. Thank you, Ron. Final playoff tune-up for the Alouettes. Final game of the season for the Red Blacks in 2019. Final weekend of the regular season kicking off at TD Place on Friday Night Football. Right, Dominic Davis back in the starting lineup for the Red Blacks for this season finale. Three and five record for him. This is his first start at quarterback since August. He has the Red Blacks only three wins of this 2019 season. And of course for the Montreal Alouettes, underneath the cloak, it is Vernon Adams making the start. We're not sure how much of him we'll see. And you thought Halloween was playoff. over. Yes, sir. Not in Montreal. They're celebrating it tonight. But Vernon Adams, this team is winless without him, so they want to get him get him in sync and get him out of the lineup healthy tonight. There's Gary Jones. His Alouettes look for Montreal's first over 500 season since 2012. The Alouettes have alternated wins and losses in each of their last eight games. And Rick Campbell says toughest year for him in the Canadian Football League. It wraps up tonight. He'd like to put a wrap on a 10-game losing streak. Their last win was against Montreal on August the 2nd, an overtime decision. Boris Beattie, who leads the league in kickoff yardage, puts that one right to the back line, and it's going to be a single point out of the gate for well, the Boris, Alouettes. Boris Beattie kicked that ball like he was mad at it. So Dominic Davis will lead the offense out. Davis, the starting quarterback for the three Red Black wins on the year. Well, and sort of the final straw for Dominic Davis, at least up until this point, as a Red Black starter came. The game where he came out and threw three first quarter picks right out of the gate. That in Saskatchewan, John Crockett is the running back, gets the handoff and gets a couple. DJ Lalama will play the weak side linebacker spot and makes the tackle along with Enoch Mwamba. Well, taking a look at this Ottawa offense, their leading receiver, 1,000-yard man Dominique Grimes, is out of the lineup. Germanique Smith draws in at his wide receiver spot on the offensive line. Former Alouette Philippe Gagnon starts at right guard. Second and seven, Davis in trouble, and he's going to get dropped. Patrick Levels on the blitz gets home. Fifth sack of the year for Levels, and his second against the Red Blacks, a two and out to start for Ottawa. Well, keep an eye from the top of your screen, left side of that defense. You're going to see Patrick Levels on the blitz. Just destroys the block at John Crockett to get to the quarterback. Greg Reed is back. Richie Leone to punt. Special teams player of the year in Ottawa. Second in the league in kicks. And it's Shakir Ryan on the return, and he brings it back close to the 50-yard line. Oh, here comes the Montreal player of the year. Most outstanding player, Vernon Adams, goes to work. Tied for second in the league in wins among quarterbacks with nine. Only Cody Fajardo has more. <laughs> Two guys who started the season as backups, leading the, the Canadian Football League in quarterbacking victories. A couple of remarkable breakout stars. Getting ready for the playoffs. Start at the 50, and they start with William stand back off the left side, and he gets strung out there. Tough man to bring down, and he ends up getting a couple. We'll set this Montreal offense for you. Second rushing team in the league. And obviously resting some guys as they get ready for the playoffs. Devere Posey, Quan Bray sitting this one out. Rookie Kayon Julian Grant gets the start at slot tonight. Same FX product. Keep an eye on Trey Rutherford at left guard. We talk a lot about the young skill guys on offense. He's become a terrific young offensive lineman, number two overall pick in the 
2018 draft. Second and eight. Adams' first pass just dumps it off. And it's stand back, trying to cut it outside, and he's got a first down. And run out at the red-black pitch, out of bounds at the Ottawa 44-yard line. It's a pickup of 14. Eye on stand back. Quick little peek, release across the formation, disappear behind that offensive line. Get a look. Again, a guy we often talk about as a big bruiser as a running back, a banger, but he's got that speed to outrun some angles on defenders. Well, Montreal first down, back in the hands of William Stanback, crashing down to about the 38-yard line, gain of five, and here's the Ottawa starting defense in their season finale. Yeah, Darius Jackson will make the start at defensive end. J.R. Tavai, who leads the team in sacks with eight, sits this one out. Middle linebacker Jared Fernandez, their top rookie, holding down the fort. From the back end, Antoine Pruneau, who's battled injuries throughout this 2019 season, back in at free safety for this 2019 finale. Adam changes the play call, Jarvion Williams in the backfield. And that pass is complete, and it will be a first down. Dante Absher out of Glenville Community College with the catch. Same school that produced an old reliable in their defensive backfield, Gerald Brown. Yes, sir. JB, three-time East Division All-Star, one-time CFL All-Star. Absher. With the team since training camp, but made his regular season debut last week with one catch. 6'3, 180. First down, Owls at the red black 31. Adams looking a little further downfield, got after again inside the 10. Cut down there by Randall Evans, but the Alouettes have a first and goal. 26-yard connection for Adams to Absher. Well, and you suspect that uh, Vernon Adams may just play enough in this game to establish that he is sharp and playoff ready before they get him out of the lineup. I think the early suggestion might be that Vernon doesn't intend to be on the field long tonight. Needs 184 yards, or at least needed it coming in to hit 4,000 on the season. Find out if he's in long enough to get there. So first and goal. The throw again, incomplete, out of the reach of Absher. Third straight target for 19. Uh, you can see the Red Blacks defense loaded things up at the line of scrimmage, essentially outnumbering the blockers in Montreal's protection scheme. But good recognition by Adams. You can see him backpedaling right away to get out of there, buy a little bit of time, get the ball out quickly. Nonetheless, the pressure forcing an inaccurate throw. Second and goal from the five. Three receivers, pressure coming, looks like offside. Back to the end zone, and Lewis has the touchdown. Impressive opening possession march for the Alouettes. Offside, Ottawa number 24. That penalty is declined. Touchdown. Well, these are two guys who have been in sync throughout the second half of the season. Vernon Adams and Eugene Lewis. His leading receiver on the scramble. Adams able to find Lewis in the back of the end zone. Former basketballer goes high to bring that one down. Fifth touchdown of the year for Lewis. Anthony Choppy offside, but that didn't matter. And it's the 23rd touchdown pass thrown by Adams. And Boris Beatty now is 39 of 41 on conference this year. Out of the gate quickly, Vernon Adams and the Alouettes into the end zone on their opening drive. Maybe it's the sun on that sun on you. I feel like the CFL on TSN is brought to you by the Nissan Titan, ranked number one in quality. 
by G.D. Power. Quality drive for the Alouettes, seven plays, 60 yards. And Eugene Lewis with the touchdown that has them up by eight. You can list off the many young breakout stars on this Alouettes team. Good looking core group of skill guys on offense. Get the wind to the back of Boris Beattie and he will require some assistance here. He'll get a hold. Greg Morris back along with the 38 year old veteran Steph Logan. Is this the last time we see Logan in the Canadian Football League? Here he is. Oh, he mishandles it and he's going to give up another. So that's two kickoff rouges for Boris Beattie. Well, let's take a look back at the Eugene Lewis touchdown. He's lined up as the one receiver. Lots of field to get open. And I think Brandon Danridge on the corner is anticipating he's going to see a corner route. So he sits. Meanwhile, Lewis makes that break inside and ends up with a ton of space with that corner guessing wrong, allowing Vernon Adams to find him off the scramble. So another start at the 35 as Davis back to throw over the middle and almost a one-handed grab for Brad Sinopoli. Sinopoli coming from out wide here. Your one receiver is going to work across the formation. And it looked, this ball just stuck there for a second as it hit his hand. It looked like he was going to be able to bring that one in. Streak of four straight thousand yard seasons will come to an end for Sinopoli. Second and ten. Back in his hands. Makes the catch. He'll get stopped short of the first down. And the punt team has to come on. Well, perhaps no player more than Brad Sinopoli symbolizes the fall from 2018 to 2019 for these Ottawa Red Blacks. His numbers cut drastically as so much of the, won't even say supporting cast, but just cast around him on offense gone this year. Leone into that breeze. It will be Ryan. And it will be a 15-yard, no yards penalty. Taken down quickly downfield, but the penalty upcoming. Eugene Lewis with the touchdown from Montreal, uh, continuing this red hot second half of the season with more on the Alouette receiver taking flight here at Brent Wallace. Absolutely, CC. As you know, Eugene Lewis's breakout season was well documented, but really, as you say, that first half was a struggle. Just seven, 243 yards in his first seven games. And so head coach Kahari Jones says he was worried about his star receiver at that point. He didn't feel like he was doing enough to be a pro player, so he brought him in, had a chat with him, and at that point, he all also moved him from slot to wide receiver and his game really flourished in the next 10 games, 840 yards. And he said he really liked to watch how he went with the defensive backs going one-on-one -on -one as a wide receiver. He said it was the thing where he saw him become more of a competitor and he really is excited for what the future may hold for Lewis as he's the first Alouettes receiver with over a thousand yards in two years, guys. Interesting, often receivers go to the next level when they move from the wide wide outs inside but the opposite for Gino Lewis yeah and you wonder sometimes if it's just a comfort thing as you alluded to often you move into the slot you get more opportunity because you're closer to the quarterback closer to the action second and ten bump one way they'll screen it off and stand back make people miss Fernandez was there to snuff it out along with help from Avery Ellis Once again, Jared Fernandez at middle linebacker for Ottawa. Their top rookie nominee. Get an indication of why here, doing a nice job in space. 
against one of the toughest running backs in the Canadian Football League. Levine to punt, Logan back. Puts that one high. Logan fields at the 17. And up across the 25 on the return. Looks like Frederick Plessy has made first contact. Not much to say, but I love you boys. And despite our season, I wouldn't have traded it for the world. So there ain't no next week. There ain't no next game. So lay it on the line. We got seven months to heal. Red marks on three. One, two, three. Michael Claussen spoke to his teammates before the final game announced his retirement prior to the game today. A seven-year vet who has to end it because of injuries yeah, and that has always been the battle unfortunately for for mike claus terrific talented player to the university of calgary a fourth round pick back in 2013 but has battled injuries throughout played in calgary and montreal as well here's davis stepping up and uh feet first slide across the 40 yard line so that vacates the crown yeah Michael Claussen the best mullet in the Canadian Football League so let's go, let's go, it's go, wide open well he, he talked about seven months of healing I think seven months of hair growing <laughs> for some other guys to try and fill the void second down out of Davis's hands quickly and Brad Sinopoli's been the favorite target tonight he's got another first down and a 10-yard grab up around the 50 He's got the mullet covered up under there, but there is Michael Clausen, one of the good guys as well in the Canadian Football League. So on the heels of John Gott last year. Yes, great, great beard lost here in Ottawa. From the best beard to the best mullet in back-to-back -back seasons. John Crockett inside and a good run across midfield and into Montreal territory. So a six-yard pickup and Trying to stack first downs here. Has some options on second and four. Wide side of the field, open there is Nate Bahar. And Bahar's got another first down, the Carlton Raven product with a grab of nine yards. Just the 15th catch of the year for Bahar. I thought he would have made more of an impact this season back here in Ottawa. Yeah, he's been special teams Bahar took him a little bit bit of time to make his way into the starting lineup Crockett looked quick there and uh, a dash close to another first down for John Crockett and with that run he takes over the red block rushing lead as he passes Moses Madu so they go no huddle and Davis will push it behind Alex Mateus and it's another red black first down yeah i like the decision offensively for ottawa going with a little bit of change of pace we saw that hurry up tempo type offense a bit on this possession just as they're trying to get a little bit of momentum maybe get montreal back on their heels after a quick start by the owls one touchdown in 35 drives it's another completion as bahar reaches back and hauls that in but the Red Blacks putting together a good looking drive here late first quarter. Uh, nice job here, John Crockett from the backfield is gonna step up in protection off the edge on DJ Lalama. Cut block to get the hands down. That creates a throwing lane for his quarterback. Nice effort there. Five straight completions for Davis. It's the ninth play of the drive. First down at the 24. And they'll screen it to Crockett. Cuts it back and is dropped around the 18-yard line. Six more. Bola combo. Enoch Moamba there defensively. Yeah, they do a nice job setting up the the screen. Second and four. Drop, Crockett, not going anywhere. Push back. 
as Javon Roland Jones makes the stop playing in the John Bowman spot. Back-to-back well, -back plays, you often put the screen and the draw in the same category offensively as plays you're using to sort of take advantage of the aggressiveness of a defensive pass rush. It almost seemed like after the screen on first down, the Montreal offense was very well prepared for draw on the next play. So Lewis Ward from 27 out. And the Red Blacks are on the board. 9-3, just under two minutes left here in the opening quarter at TD Place. Well, Henry Burris got more attention this week in Ottawa than the house giving out full chocolate bars at Halloween. I mean, this was the talk of the town as Hank let people know what he thought about what went wrong this year, and it focused on the general manager. Here's how Rick Campbell reacted. I know this. I know that Henry Burris cares a lot about uh, the Red Blacks and the city of Ottawa. He loves this place. Um, just like I do, just like a bunch of us do, and uh, there has been a lot of uh, anger and sadness and whatever this year, just with what's happened with uh, with our record. And so uh, um, I'm glad people care. Well, Hank, back in studio. Uh, Hank, did you think it would cause such a ripple effect? And where did they go from here? Well, I mean, this is something we've talked about for a number uh, of months here since everything happened during the offseason. But, you know, it's all about improving just the image and the face of the organization. And that's where the focus of it is. It's not a shot at Marcel. But, again, as a quarterback, if I threw five interceptions in the game, I do have to take responsibility. And it's his job to take responsibility for the way the team is this year. I mean, we want to make sure that we can keep the stands packed as there wasn't a sellout for the Red Blacks this year. We want to see this team get back to prominence and to success. And it all started with Marcel and Rick. And definitely, they will be back next year, and I hope they both are, because look at the success of this team up to this point, guys. Well, cup appearances in three of the previous four years, so I think you do get a little bit of a grace period, but nobody saw 10 consecutive losses in a, a team that's ended up with this kind of play down the stretch this season right about that and it starts up top that's where the onus falls and, and he has to start improving relationships with, with like players and, on that and make sure back to carry and that's that's the one fear for alouette fans here tonight is that one of their starters might get injured always the the great debate at this time of year you want to call it reps versus raster you know being in sync, having your timing down, staying in rhythm versus keeping everybody healthy. Well, Lewis, Lewis getting attention. And you gotta wonder if we'll see him again tonight. Second and four. Adam stands in underneath and when he's got the catch. And a first down. The rookie of the year for the Alouettes in 2019. Yeah, Winnicky, big target, leads Alouette receivers in touchdown catches this season. We may expect to see Winnicky line up on the inside. You see him as the number three receiver in that formation. Quite often lines up as number two, again, a little farther away from the quarterback. But with Quan Bray out of the lineup tonight, Devere to Posey as well. Vernon Adams, a little toss inside, and that gets read beautifully. Big step up for Kevin Brown on the final play of the opening quarter here in Ottawa. So let's get it, bro. Red Blacks! with a touchdown drive to that 
first quarter. The Red Blacks had a good looking drive, but settled for three. Yeah, but a, a good response for the Red Blacks C coming into this game. It certainly looked like Montreal was a team that was getting ready for the playoffs, and Ottawa was a team that was getting ready for the offseason when you looked at those first couple of possessions and the way the teams came out. But I think it just took Ottawa a little while to get going. Dominique Davis making his first start since August, and he seemed to find his legs, particularly when they went to that tempo offense. Didn't take long for Vernon Adams to get going. He looks playoff ready. You wonder about Gene Lewis, and that's a big issue here tonight about Montreal trying to win a game but stay healthy at the same time. And yeah, one of the one of the I guess happy challenges when you're Kahari Jones, first year head coach for these Montreal Alouettes. Second and long, Adams over the middle, and Fulbert Lucier with the catch. See where they mark it. Looks like he could come up a yard short here. And the heavy team comes on. Spencer Moore checks in. And it's going to be third and more than a yard. Stand back, he's got it. And no trouble there as he barges down to around the 20. I'm gonna take a look here at the work of Christian Matt, the center for Montreal, and their nominee is most outstanding offensive lineman. You'll see why. Right here, he got a hold of the edge on Latanzio. just cleared the path. So third and two, they get 12 and have a first down now at the Ottawa 20. Stand back again. And he finds the hole off the right side and gets hit hard by the corner, Randall Evans, who steps up. We talk all the time about vision the vision of a running back and you know the way that I would define it is really just a feel for the way that the the blocking scheme is going to develop and there you saw it with William Stanback a play that looked like it's drawn up to go inside but he recognizes that the edge blocker has outside leverage on his guy and bounces it find a little bit softer path 53 Total yards from scrimmage for stand back and another carry up the middle and he pounds that inside the 10 and again Fernandez with first contact. So stand back to the sidelines and again Jarvie and Williams will come into the game. Yeah, I wonder to what extent William Standback might be on a bit of a carry count here in this football game, particularly with the youngster Williams dressed in support. First to goal, Adams in zone, Winnicky touchdown. Jake Winnicky with his eighth touchdown of the season. And Vernon Adams now up to 24. Touchdown passes as the Alouette fans who have made the trip celebrate. They have a great view of the strike right here. Good protection. Look at the clear passing lane in front of Vernon Adams. Wide open window for him to spot Winnicky as he comes across the middle. expand the lead up by 13 on the eight touchdown catch of the year for Jake Winnicky. Season finale triple header the CFL on TSN tomorrow with 
First place up for grabs in the West. We kick off at Mosaic. Eskimos and Rough Riders. It will be Cody Fajardo to start. Argos and Ticats renew their hostilities at seven. And then the Stampeders and Lions to wrap up the regular season. We'll find out if that game had, does have a bearing on first of the West. Yes. Rough Riders can clinch with their win over Edmonton. Otherwise, Calgary can get first if they beat BC. Logan snags that, and he'll bring it back up across the 30 to around the 35-yard line. Third all-time in pro return, kick return yardage behind only the NFL's Brian Mitchell and the great Gizmo Williams for Steph Logan. Yeah, Steph Logan, guy who had has had very good careers on both sides of the border, pro bowler during his time in the National Football League. BC, Montreal, and here in Ottawa. Red Blacks start at their 35 with Davis throwing and has a completion. Dominic Davis with the connection to Caleb Hawley for a first down. So triple header tomorrow, Chris, gets started, as you mentioned, with uh, big playoff implications, certainly in the, uh, the opening game for the Saskatchewan Rough Riders. Eskimos watching this one with the anticipated Eastern semifinal game against Montreal. Yeah, doing a little advanced scouting, no doubt. And again, the scare went up yesterday when we found out Cody Fajardo was not practicing because of a back issue, but we're told good to go. Nice burst there again by Crockett, and Red Black starting to move the football, an eight-yard gain for Crockett into Alouette territory. Well, that may have uh, triggered a state of emergency in the Green Province. Here's Davis underneath, throw is made, and it's complete. And Brad Sinopoli down inside the 30-yard line. And for Sinopoli, fourth catch of this opening half. And Brad Sinopoli achieved another milestone in his terrific career last week, catching Tony Gabriel to become the all-time leading receiver in Ottawa franchise history. Yeah, that one's special. Look at Davis, nine straight. We were watching him in the season finale last year. A performance that made an impression, and I think went a ways to giving him a chance to be the opening day starter in 2019. Flagged down on this play. Holding call against the Red Blacks. He'll bring it back. Always. Ottawa, number 65. 10-yard penalty. Repeat, first down. Mark Cordy, the left tackle. Yeah, always becomes a challenge for the offensive lineman once the quarterback moves from the designated throwing spot as those guys have their back to the football. Can't really be sure exactly what area they're supposed to be protecting anymore. First and 20 over the middle. And the catch made by R.J. Harris. Short yardage. Oh, veteran CFL coach Joe Pow Pow, former head coach here in Ottawa during the existence of the Renegades, now the offensive coordinator. Second and 15. And Davis connects again with Sinopoli, gets away. It'll be close to first down. Davis has completed 11 of his last 12. And let's see where they mark this football. It is an Ottawa first down. Yeah, Sinopoli is going to, again, come all the way across the formation. Trying to get lost in coverage as he runs through zones laterally there. 
needed 15, got it. And R.J. Harris will get tossed down by Greg Reed. Just back to Sinopoli, five for 67 so far. His season high is 76 yards, so. Might be Sinopoli's big game of the year to wrap things up. Second and five. Time for Davis, a crosser, one-handed catch. And Hawley, the grab, but Levels tosses him down. And the field goal unit will come on for the Red Blacks. And some jawing here between Jamar Jones and Caleb Hawley. A nice pickup from the offensive line just before that one-handed stab by Hawley. Uh, Stefan Nembo, the right tackle, picking up the twist. He'll go good. And it's 16-6. Midway through the second quarter in Ottawa. Well, the CFL lost another good man this week. The passing of Charlie Taft, the former head coach of the Montreal Alouettes and Hamilton Ticats, a two-time coach of the year, passed away in Florida after a short battle with cancer. 1999 and 2000 coach of the year and took the Montreal Alouettes to the Great Cup final in 2000. Our condolences to his family, his friends, and his many colleagues, still some of them here in the Canadian Football League. Yeah, his legacy will live on for a long time in the Canadian Football League when you look at some of the players that he coached, people who are now coaching Touchdown in the league themselves. Montreal number eight. Five-yard penalty remains first. Offensive coordinator in his last stop at the University of Central Florida made quite an impact there. Yeah. As that program has made huge strides in recent years. Charlie, one of the guys that kind of got it going. Well, time count and a direct snap here. And the play snuffed out on a good defensive tackle by Anthony Chaffee. Yeah, Chaffee. Dante Absher taking the direct snap. Maintaining that outside in leverage, contained responsibility, getting up the field as deep as the football. Vernon Adams started the night fifth of the league in passing. He's gone by Mike Riley in the four spot. Now over 100 yards passing and looking for more here. And that's a good sign to have Gene Lewis on the receiving end of that. Didn't think we'd see him back after that hit he took in the opening quarter. Yeah, lone receiver into the boundary side of the field. And this, I think, has been part of the benefit for Eugene Lewis in moving to wide out is that oftentimes when you become that short side wide out, when you get, when the offense gets into trips formations or even quads formations to the field, you end up getting one-on-one -on -one matchups, isolated matchups. And Kahari Jones talked about his competitive fire, making the most of that. Catch that. Looked like he grabbed that off the shoe tops. There is a flag down. Nice grab by Lewis. Flag in the Alouette backfield. Major foul, roughing the passer, Ottawa number 75. 15-yard penalty, automatic first down. Cameron Walker, flag for roughing the passer. There you see Cameron Walker, the Guelph product, former Argonaut and Tiger Cat. A little bit late with that. Arrival. There you see Eugene Lewis going down to scoop that one. Nice grab. First down at the Red Black 42. JR Tavai not in the Red Black lineup, but defensive end. Their league leader with eight sacks. First down. 
We got Stanback two up more yardage. Another good run by Stanback. Ellis and Bruneau in on the tackle, but Stanback's got nine more. Well, here again, you see the work of that Ottawa offensive line. William Stanback chewing up yardage behind them. So seven carries for Stanback. He's had ten touches. How many more before Gary Jones sits him down? Gary Jones did talk about his experience as a player, and when they sat guys late in the year, he felt they lost momentum and didn't have it going into the playoffs. So that's why he has Adams in, Stanback in, Lewis in. But for how much longer? Last week we saw them come out late in the first half about this point in the first half. Yeah, th this is it. it. It is such a fine balance, certainly not a science. And so much of it, I think, is based on your gut feeling as as a coach in terms of, okay, when, when is the best strategy? When is the best time to get these guys out? But Kahari Jones, with his extensive experience as, as a player in this league, they take a hit here and throws incomplete. I think has pretty good feel and pretty good insight as to what to do and, and why he's doing. Obviously, you don't want to get hurt, but when you're playing, there's no way of trying not to get hurt, is yeah. there? I mean, yeah, you, just you, you don't want guys thinking about getting hurt either when they play, right? You can't can't play the game thinking about protecting yourself. It's just not the nature of the sport. Second and ten at the Ottawa 31. Pressure coming. Takes a hit and is dropped. Avery Ellis got there along with Etere Latenzio. Adam's out when you wonder if he'll come back tonight. Tanzio, one of the local products on this team, and Avery Ellis, he's in that stand-up defensive end position closest to the bottom of your screen. Working that twist, and goes inside, tackle outside. Both find their way to the quarterback. Ellis gets credit for it, so that's his seventh and third in the last four games. for the corner here and it ends up into the end zone it's another single for Montreal yeah. coverage of TSN hockey continues next week it features the sins of the Big Apple on Monday to take on the Rangers 7 Eastern 8 Atlantic and followed by a fresh installment of the Canadians and Bruins rivalry on Tuesday. Puck drops at 7.30 Eastern, 8.30 Atlantic on TSN2. NHL regional restrictions apply. Habs with a big comeback win last night. In Vegas, look out. A little contact there as Jamar Jones steps up. And he left the mark. Uh, the view from up above, this is one where I often find myself holding my breath as you can see the defender bearing down on that, the receiver, usually a running back going to the flat who's got his head turned away from that approaching contact. That's Guillermo Villalobos with his first CFL catch. He gets attention and we hit the three minute break. Three minutes to halftime. Coming up, we're going to talk more to this guy who stirred it up in Ottawa this week about the state of the Red Blacks. Yes, he did. <laughs> also, we'll hear from Cody Fajardo on his back injury in Saskatchewan's big game against Edmonton tomorrow, pursuing first in the West. Back to Chris and Dwayne. Thank you, Rod. Look forward to that at halftime. It was Brendan Calanders, not Villalobos, who was shaken up. We're looking forward to seeing Guillermo Villalobos in that Ottawa offense, expecting to see him 
take a few snaps here tonight, but it was Galanders that took that heavy jolt from Jamar Jones on the last tackle. Diego Viamontes will be in the starting lineup for the Eskimos tomorrow, so we'll see which global player makes the first reception of the Canadian Football League. Yeah, well, very fitting to see some of these guys getting some action as the first LFA Canadian draft took place today. Second and six. Flags are down. And the pass complete. Germanic Smith with the grab. Offside, Montreal number 91. Five-yard penalty, repeat, second down. Javan Roland Jones offside. He'll head to the sidelines. Then it'll be second and a yard. Looks sharp tonight. Dominic Davis plunging for the first down. I mean, you dial back to the first two games of the year and... Offside, Montreal defensive line. It's a five-yard penalty, first down Ottawa. I mean, he did throw four interceptions at Calgary, but he found a way to come back and beat the Stampeders. And he put up big numbers in the home opener, the only home win for Ottawa in a 44-41 victory against Saskatchewan. You beat Calgary in Calgary. You beat Saskatchewan. You think you're on your way. Yeah, no, exactly. This team off to a, a terrific start, at least in the, the win-loss tally. But eventually, some of those mistakes started catching up to them. Interceptions have been an issue. Gets that one away, and Crockett spins off DJ Lalama and into Alouette territory. Yeah, I mean, when you look at the passing numbers as a whole for the Ottawa quarterbacks, and there you see the most recent Ottawa quarterbacks to win, despite throwing four interceptions in a game. There it is, Dominic Davis on June 15th against Calgary. And kudos for, for finding a way, basically, to, to shake it off and get the victory. Make plays when you need to make plays. But you look at, at this team as a whole, and they, they have struggled at the position. They have struggled with their passing game as a whole, not just at the quarterback spot. Randall Evans down first to bring down Shakir Ryan. And again, Ram at the half, coming up with Rod Bilt. Hank and Davis, more on the Red Blacks from a guy who has lived it and lives here in town, Henry Burris. Yeah, I look forward to hearing more from Hank. Matt, Matthew Schultz comes in. We have seen Vernon Adams take his last regular season snap. And Adams exited part way through the second quarter of last week's game as well. Going to get to 4,000, but a tremendous regular season for Vernon Adams. They're going to send Blitz right away, but the handoff, Williams straight ahead. And has close to three. And he looks playoff ready, doesn't he? 13 of 16, 126, and a couple of touchdowns in the first half for Vernon Adams. Yeah, it looked sharp. It was the full package from Vernon Adams. Not just throwing the ball, but but managing the pocket as well. You know, anticipating blitzes, avoiding the rush. Let the league in big play pass plays of at least 30 yards with 28. Here's Schultz who talked about it being an important game. That was a dangerous pass. Knocked down on the corner. There's Randall Evans once again. Uh, we've talked in recent weeks about the, the versatility of some of these players in the Ottawa secondary. Randall Evans, certainly among them. 
Bounces out to play the boundary corner. This week he had filled in in recent weeks at free safety for the injured Antoine Pruneau. leaders in defensive plays this season. So BD stands near the Alouette goal line. He's going to give up two here. Twisting and turning and taking a little extra time off the clock. So it's a nine-point Alouette lead. It was nomination weekend here are the outstanding player nominees for the ottawa red blacks yeah, maybe it says something about the the way the red black season went and and some of why it might have gone that way when you look at guys occupying four of those six categories being players who finished the season on the injured list avery williams to me was among the top defensive players in the entire canadian football league before he went down nolan mcmillan of the most experienced veterans along that offensive line. Some significant losses for this team. Here you see Jared Fernandez, their top rookie nominee. Of course, Richie Leone on special teams, continuing to boom the ball on punts and kickoffs. Nolan McMillan beating out Brad Sinopoli, the perennial guy at top Canadian but word in the Ottawa camp was that it was his best year and a guy that nobody seemed to like to play against yeah, yeah Nolan McMillan the first ever Ottawa Red Blacks draft pick Ottawa was allowed to pick redshirt junior players in their first draft in 2013 before coming into the league in 2014 took McMillan out of the University of Iowa with their first pick. After the safety, the kickoff, and here's Logan, good return, and out beyond the 50-yard line. He's thinking about that. Giving up the safety. You do it for field position, and Ottawa's got pretty good field position even after the kickoff here. Well, that's it. It's a two-part strategy, right? And the second part requires a good kick and cover on that kickoff. Kicking into the wind, which is part of the reason why they didn't want to punt out of the end zone. BD doesn't quite get his usual depth on the kickoff, and then terrific return from the veteran Steph Logan puts Ottawa at midfield. See what Davis does with the field position. Great pass there as he gets Germany Smith in a tight window. But is Davis the man down here? And he is slow to get up. Looks like he's going to be able to continue. Well, Dominic Davis stood in there to make this throw. Watch Javon Roland Jones coming from the bottom of the screen. Ryan oh, Brown the... from the top. And a helmet shot there that didn't get called. Crockett right side and Enoch Moamba will wrestle him down. Yeah, and... Moamba's sixth tackle of the game. Another terrific season for Enoch Mwamba, the first overall pick back in the 2011 draft out of St. Francis Xavier. Began his career as a Winnipeg, Winnipeg Blue Bomber. Fourth in the league in tackles. Look out, Malama was on the blitz and gets home and drops Davis back at the 42. And Davis a little slow to get up again. Not sure he's fully recovered from the last hit. DJ Lalama starting at the weak side linebacker spot in place of Chris Aki. This is a guy who probably watched in his formative years, watched Enoch Mwamba with the Winnipeg Blue Bombers. DJ, a Winnipeg native, played his college football at the University of Manitoba for Brian Doby. And our stats guy is on his game tonight. You mentioned Mwamba being a number one pick, Lalama the final pick 
in the 2016 draft. Lewis Ward from 47 has hit it, and it's a six-point Bellowet lead. Well, we mentioned Enoch Mwamba. Once again, a nominee on that list of Montreal outstanding player award winners this year. Yeah, no surprise to see Vernon Adams with his tremendous season as their most outstanding player nominee. Again, Enoch Mwamba, you know, incredibly, I'm incredibly happy for Enoch as a guy. When you think about how he battled injuries for a time, particularly when he first returned to the CFL from his National Football League stint, but has overcome that and is playing some of the best football of his career here in his ninth year as a professional. Thinking if we had a breakout award winner this year, it'd be a good point between <laughs> there be a lot Adams of names. and Cody Fajardo, at least those names two. On that list. Dean Evans would be a third. What up, Dean? Baby, I love you. Enoch Mwamba and DJ Lalama, by the way, both former President's Trophy winners as the outstanding stand-up defensive player in Canadian University football. Enoch in 2010, Lalama in 2016. The guy that's been through some of the hard times in Montreal now yep. really able to savor this kind of season. Like delay as security deals with uh, no, I mean, I know. We all tilted that way. Fan that's a little too over exuberant about the season finale. Kind of this dish, you know what I'm saying? Uh, how about the job this guy has done? Bob yeah, Sloan. Okay. Oh, Defensive coordinator. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Much of the credit for the Alouette's yeah, defensive yeah. success, really I think, goes to the attitude that he brought to this team. Hey. Long time. National Football League, NCAA football. Tremendous resume in American football, but a Canadian football rookie didn't come into this league thinking that he knew it all, right? He came in with an open mind, willingness to learn, and he has been a quick study. to go here. Matthew Schultz mentioned he was looking forward to this opportunity to make one more lasting impression for the 2019 season. Not to say that he might not be involved in the playoff game. Obviously, it's Vernon Adams to start. But Schultz wants to send a message that he belongs here and he has shown some improvement during the season. Yeah, he certainly has. We have seen an experience and reps are so important at any position really, but for especially for those quarterbacks, this is a valuable time for him. There's Williams. Jeremy and Williams slice down Corey Tyndall with the tackle as Williams has a gain of about five. Uh, Corey Tyndall establishing himself as one of the veterans in that secondary. Once again, you prevent that guy from getting outside on you. Outside leverage. Comes low, gets into the legs of the running back to bring him down. So 16 seconds on the clock, third down, and BD into punt. Or are they just going to run it down here? No, oh, they'll run it down, excuse me. For the first half in the books, Alouette's get a couple of touchdown passes from Vernon Adams. And the fur flying. Yeah, if I'm going to the playoffs, I'm walking away from this.
Red Blacks don't intend to go quietly into the good night. Okay, we're done this first half. We'll sort out penalties when we start the second half. 17-11, Alouettes with the lead. More fur to fly. Here's the panel with Rod Smith. Freshman year, the debut full-length album from the Rec Laws featuring the brand new single, Old Country Soul. Listen now on Apple Music. At the half, the Owls lead the Red Blacks. Here's Milton some numbers. Well, Kahari Jones talked about he wanted his three stars to play in the first half. Well, I think he saw enough out of them. Vernon Adams Jr., 126 yards, two touchdowns. William Stanback, seven carries, 64 yards. And Eugene Lewis, four catches, 50 yards. I don't think we'll see those guys in the second half. Kahari, that's Milt's quarterback. That's my quarterback. And here he is with Brent Wallace. Okay, we saw Matthew Schultz a couple of series at the end. Was it, will it be the rest of his night here, or will you still continue to look at Adams? No, no. Vernon's done. I'll go with Matt, and uh, hopefully Pip can I'll, I'll get a chance to get in there as well. And uh, yeah, we got what we wanted out of out of Vernon. Uh, he, he he played well and uh, did some good things for us. We've seen the Red Blacks start to close the score, but will that dictate who you play the rest of the night? And are you okay with the way your team is playing so far here? I'm okay. I'm okay. I'd like to be a little better. I'd like to hold them a little bit more on on defense. We've held them to field goals, but I feel like we've had some opportunities to uh, to get the ball back a little sooner, and so we just got to tighten up a little bit, and uh, offensively, we just got to keep moving the ball, and then we should be okay. We saw some emotions at the end. Will you remind your team with the playoffs coming to get out of that stuff going into here in the second half? Definitely, definitely. We don't need to get involved in that. We've had too much of that as it is, and so uh, with our team, we just want to get ready for the, for the playoffs, but we want to win this game. Thanks, Gary. Appreciate your time. Thanks. And he got a good first half from Vernon Adams. It's all he needs to see. A couple of touchdown passes. Matthew Schultz in the game now. 17-11, Alouettes. Regular season finale with the playoffs coming up next week. Halftime show brought to you by Ram Heavy Duty. The most capable Ram Heavy Duty pickup ever. Always ready for the second half. It's right. In Ottawa, 17-11, the visitors have the lead, headed to the second half, and headed to the sidelines. Brent Wallace is with Brad Sinopoli. Brad, you guys certainly closed the gap here going into the half. What was the message that you try to get a win here in your final game? Yeah, just keep it up. I think we're playing well. We just got to finish when we get down to the red zone, and um, just little details that we got to clean up. You signed a two-year extension. It's announced here just before the game. Was it important to get it done going into the offseason? And I guess are you excited to remain here as an Ottawa Red Black? Yeah, exactly. I love this place and love this organization and the fans. And, um, you know, I'm just really happy that it got done quick. And, uh, you know, can't wait to uh, get this win and, and continue on next year. Thanks, Brad. Appreciate your time. Thank you. Five for 67 in that first half for Brad Sinopoli. And I think one of the reasons they announced some signings today was going to send a message that it's going to be different in 2020 here in Ottawa. Yeah, certainly after taking a little bit of a beating in free agency in the last off season. You want to get ahead of things a little bit and establish that you do have players who want to be here, who want to stay here. Here's J.P. Bulldog, who's their special teams leader. As they kick it off to start this second half, Shakir Ryan up over the 45 and going to start near midfield for Matthew Schultz here in this third quarter. Well, Matthew Schultz. Once again, we'll start the second half. Had the opportunity to start a game earlier this season. Got extensive action last week. Once again, Vernon Adams left the game before halftime. Vernon Adams done for the night. 9-5 coming in. The Alouettes 0-3 in the three games without him. 
First down up at the 54, and Schultz has the completion. And yeah, Julian Grant, or excuse me, Felix Fauvert Lucier, the catch, and a first down for the Alouettes. Fauvert Lucier, the former Hamilton Tiger Cat and University de Laval product. It's a quick hitter here. Want to try and get the ball out of Schultz's hands quickly, keep the pressure off, let him develop a little bit of a rhythm, find his groove. Choffy the tackle, and now Williams inside. And spins down inside the 35-yard line. And has about four. And it'll be Jarvion Williams at the University of Texas at San Antonio. Carrying the load here in the second half. This is a guy that the Alouettes had had their eye on for a little while before being able to bring him into the fold. Second and five. Schultz to the wide side of the field and he makes the connection and that is Keon Julian Grant with the catch. Thank you. Julian Grant, second round pick for the Alouettes in the 2019 draft. Another Sane FX product, coached by Gary Waterman. Terrific receiver and kick returner during his time with the X-Men. Played with his dad. Curry Grant many years ago with the Hamilton Tiger Cats. Schultz just got that away. And a one-handed catch by Absher. Sherrod Baltimore the catch. Corey Tyndall on the blitz. With the hit on the quarterback. Get a look at the, the grab. Nice. Stab by Dante Absher. And no Devere Posey, Quan Bray, or Chris Matthews. Well, and it really is a, a twofold benefit in a situation like this. You get to rest some of your guys, but also get to, to get some meaningful reps for some of these other guys. Again, a guy like Dante Absher, the last catch by Malcolm Carter. Yep. These are guys who have been with this team all year, spending most of the year on the practice roster, but valuable for them to get get an opportunity in a game situation for their development, but also for the team to evaluate those guys going forward. Third catch of the year for Carter. So four different receivers on the drive. None of them have more than 10 catches this year. But getting a chance here with Schultz running the football around. Down to the Ottawa 13. With the blitz. Williams the run and just got a couple. Tyndall there on the tackle. Helping out was Choppy. Yeah, Ottawa brought Antoine Pruneau up. The safety bit blitz stacked up the line of scrimmage. Essentially created a situation where somebody was going to be free off the edge. You're always going to adjust your offensive blocking scheme to take care of the most dangerous guys on the inside, but if those edge guys can get there and disrupt as they did, really impact the offense. Bruneau, one of the leaders, but missed nine this year. Second and ten end zone. Touchdown. Absher's got the kick. Nice strike thrown here by Matthew Let's Schultz. Go, no. Quick out, timing route. Ball's there on the money just inside that sideline. So a souvenir for Dante Absher. Guy who was cut in training camp was ill during camp and wasn't at his best. And he got called back. Beattie adds the convert and the 
Alouettes expand the lead back up by 13 on a third quarter touchdown from Matthew Schultz to Dante Absher. Schultz looking good in relief of Vernon Adams. Oh, uh, yeah. I'll remember you on top. Be on top. Yeah. Five for six, 52 know, yards, and a touchdown pass. <laughs> and William Art will start the second half for the Ottawa Red Blacks. 0-3 this year in his three starts. And the first pass skips to the feet of Nate Bahar and complete. had started the, the previous three games for the Red Blacks, two of those against the Toronto Argonauts. Second year man. That's on target and a first down catch over the middle. Another grab for Brad Sinopoli. Now six in the game. And a gain of 12, so he's up to 79 yards. And so that's a season high for Sinopoli. There's Sinopoli working on the inside. Security blanket. Six receivers out, R.J. Harris. At midfield, Alouette say that ball skipped incomplete, but it's like they're marking a catch. Just shy of the midfield strike. Hard to see from that yeah, angle. To say. Academic now, Crockett with the run and a first down as he pounces into Montreal territory. Well, John Crockett. Coming off the injured list to play in this season finale. DJ Lalama for Montreal has eight tackles in the game. RJ Harris on the hitch. And down inside the Alouette 45. Now, I made the suggestion a couple of weeks ago that the German born RJ Harris and French-born Boris Beattie of Montreal. Now, these guys should have the option to change their classification now that the global category exists to be considered as global players. And Crockett breaking tackles and pounding it down to the 25-yard line. Nice run by Crockett. You suggesting might be a little more value as a global player. Flags flying here long after the play was over. Yeah, a little bit of pushing and shoving behind the play there. But obviously it's a situation that would be ad advantageous for those players. Typically, once players are classified. Two penalties on the play. Major foul, unnecessary roughness. Montreal, number 97, and Ottawa, number 64. Penalties offset, first down. So Woody Barron and Evan Johnson got into it. They butt heads long enough for enough plays down there in the trenches. Not surprising that it's occasionally gonna get a little bit heated. With the controls, a first down and a low pass incomplete. Sinopoli couldn't pull it up with Greg Reed in the trail position. Yeah, so just to finish that thought, I'll say that the rule has all, always existed that basically in the classifications of guys, whether it's been import, non-import, national, international, what have you, whatever you are when you sign your first contract is what you remain. But I'm saying these guys signed before the global category existed. So there was no opportunity for them to ever be classified as that before they entered the league. And it would be advantageous for them, certainly given what the roster rules are now, to be classified as, as global players. Offside, Montreal number 93. Five-yard penalty, 
remains second down. Antonio Simmons jumped the gun and, and perhaps more advantageous down the road. With yeah, yeah, as we'll see, the, the number of global players, one on rosters this year, two will be on rosters beginning in 2020. Second and five. Sinopoli and Harris in motion. Pressure off the edge, got it away. Harris the catch, touchdown. Timing perfect for the quarterback and delivers it to RJ Harris for the Ottawa Major. Well, you'll see the motion. Just the tail end of it, right to left on your screen. Terrific read, great concentration from R.J. Harris as Siante Evans. You'll see Evans come flashing into the picture here. Reaching for that ball just as it arrives, but Harris focuses in, makes sure he gets across that goal line before anyone touches him. He's under review by the command center. So scoring play. Scoring play, though, confirm whether or not Harris went in untouched. And it did not appear to me. Waiting for confirmation of the third touchdown of the year for Harris. After review, the ball carrier was down at the one yard line. It will be first down, Red Blacks, at the one-yard line. Okay, they're ruling that Siante Evans did touch Harris. Contact me to down the receiver. I'm not sure we saw it, but the command center did. Maybe they're getting replays from somewhere else. Someone's undercutting us. Maybe one of the global cameras got it. <laughs> so first and goal, right side. Touchdown. Jonathan Jennings takes it in. CTV drama Emergence, where nothing is as it seems. Emergence, all new, Tuesday at 10, 8 Mountain, only on CTV. First touchdown in 40 possessions for the Ottawa Red Blacks. And they get within a touchdown here midway through the third quarter at TD Place. Here Ryan vacuums that up just beyond the 20. And is dropped around the 37-yard line. Kevin Brown, the special teams tackle. Well, the play that set up the touchdown was this connection from Art to Harris. Contact there. Next play into the end zone. 
definitely one of the coach of the year candidates. There's a few good candidates for that award this year, but here's the resume for Kahari Jones, who's helped this dramatic turnaround in one season for Montreal. Yeah, what a difference he has made. You know, the impact on his quarterback, Vernon Adams, speaks for itself, but I think the impact on the entire culture and attitude of this football team has been massive. And best sideline Led Zeppelin air guitar, <laughs> hands down in the Canadian Football League. He's a guy that loves the game. Well, he, he certainly does. I, you know, the energy that you've seen on the sidelines, we've all seen the shots of Kahari dancing during timeouts and getting his team going over there. I mean, he kind of rocks his way through pregame warm-up. He's out there taking reps, throwing balls early in warm-up, getting his receivers ready to go. That's been infectious for the Montreal Alouettes. Second and eight, crosser, Williams can't hang on. So it'll be third down and a punt up coming for Boris Petey. Well, Jarvion Williams. We saw William Stanback run this route earlier in the game. It's that circle route. Tucking underneath behind the offensive line. And I wonder if he might have lost sight of that ball coming out. With so many big bodies in the way. And they'll tack yards on that return. 13 games decided in the final three minutes. Seven comeback wins. They have been the cardiac kids. Here's the last six wins that have all gone down to the wire. And the ninth win of the year was a significant milestone for their coach. Knowing that when we got the ninth win, we wouldn't have a losing record is 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 a is a big thing, and now going one step further and and uh, having a winning record is is uh, is is even better. And so uh, I would I would love to have that for the guys to show that uh, that that hey this is a, you can truly say you're a winning football team. Trying to win their tenth for the first time as an Alouette team since 2012. Seven-point lead, but work to be done here. And the Red Blacks have the football at their 46 after the horse collar tackle penalty. And Art tracked down by Bo Banner. Yeah, Banner expected to see a, a few more reps in this ball game with John Bowman resting up for the playoffs. Banner out of Central Washington. Second and nine. And Bahar turned and the ball was at his feet. Incomplete. Set down to the sidelines. Here's Brent Wallace. Well, Chris, as you remember, near the end of the first half, Dominic Davis went down with an injury. Well, that's going to limit him. He's not coming back to the end for the rest of the game. He is out with all they're describing right now is an injury, will not return, but it looks like it'll be Will Nart's team now to try and get this team a win at the end of the season. Guys? Unfortunate for Dominic Davis, who really seemed to find a, a rhythm in the first half of that football game. Throwing the ball accurately. Completing passes for a high percentage. It kind of got the offense moving after a slow start in the first couple of possessions. Number 91, five-yard penalty remains third down. Procedure call against Ottawa. He had completed 14 straight, but we saw it. A helmet to helmet connection that, that did go uncalled and then on a subsequent play was was sacked again and Davis night and season is done. Shakir Ryan from the 35 and brings it back 10. A late hit there by Dubois. And excuse me, flag fly.
Major foul, unnecessary roughness. Ottawa, number 89. 15-yard penalty, first down. So the late hit from Marco Dubois. Yeah, and it's one where you see Dubois up here, the bottom of your screen. He I think tried to, to limit the contact, honestly, to try to hold up on the, the ball carrier, but it already launched himself. Why does he get off here? Well, they might have Corey Tyndall offside as he was trying to time up that halfback blitz again. May have been just a hair early that time. Procedure, Montreal, number 55. Five-yard penalty remains first down. So Tyndall not offside, but I think he caused the, the early movement Landon as Rice Landon Rice saw him coming. So here you see Tyndall, he's on the move. And it's going to be the right tackle. Landon Rice knows he's coming, and he's got to try and get out there to get him. Obviously a mismatch in terms of quickness. Rice trying to get off on the ball as quickly as he can. Christian Matt out of the game. They've shuffled a couple of players. Spencer Wilson's gone from left guard to center. Jameson from right tackle to right guard. And you see Landon Rice in at the tackle spot. Landon Rice. Kind of the last man standing, the Johnny Manziel trade. But even he, after coming to Montreal in that trade last year, was released, went back to Hamilton, released, returned to Montreal this year. Johnny who? <laughs> yeah, that's what they're saying in Montreal. After the catch, a flag on the play. Spencer Moore checking in. Legal contact, Ottawa number 27. The penalties declined, first down Montreal. Baltimore got flagged, but they'll take the catch and a first down at the Ottawa 36. Sure on Baltimore, moving from corner to halfback this week in the ongoing shuffles of the Ottawa secondary. Williams dragged down. My final editorial thought of the year. If only a lot of fans could get as excited about the guys who can play in this league as they did for a guy who, who proved he could not play in this league. Yeah, very well said. Very well said. And you... It's a tribute to Milt Stiegel, the GOAT. Second and four, here they come. He's swinging out to Williams and he can't make the catch. And would have been a tough one, but a couple of passes that Williams was not able to bring in. Well, here's how it all turned around this season. I mean, the record, the thing that stands out, there you see the change in starting quarterback, change in head coach. Go from missing the playoffs to not just making the playoffs, but at least a 500 record and a home playoff game. And a team that looked like it might be starting in disarray with a, a change at the GM spot. Mike Sherman was let go before it got underway. And Boris Beatty here to make it a two possession Montreal lead again up by 10 late third quarter. Uh, it's interesting Chris when you, you look at these Montreal Alouettes you know obviously so much credit goes to Kahari Jones for the, the job that he's done of steering this ship through a lot of early season turmoil you mentioned ownership change and, and general managerial change to open the season. You know, but 
I think a lot of credit has to go to the departed general manager, Kavis Reed, who's the guy who put so many of these pieces in place. Talked about how deep that receiving core is. But it all starts at the quarterback spot. They found themselves a quarterback. And that will be one of the issues in Ottawa yep. as they look ahead to next year. Ottawa, number eight. Five-yard penalty remains first down. Uh, certainly a question to be answered as we've seen all of those quarterbacks have their opportunity this year again will earned who had been the number three guy started the last three games as the team tries to evaluate what they have with him Sinopoli, another catch holds on at the 38 is that guy burris available <laughs> Well, he's got another job somewhere right now. Seven catches for Sinopoli on the night. So you're saying they're probably looking elsewhere. <laughs> Guns that one, and it is caught. Forward progress for R.J. Harris should be first down. It is just beyond the 45. as he did on his almost touchdown catch, demonstrating terrific concentration and fighting for a contested ball. Catch here for Caleb Hawley at midfield, close to another first down. By the way, earlier in the drive, Sinopoli with a catch that now moves him fourth all time. Ahead of Stephon Jones in Ottawa football history in terms of yardage. There you see the numbers through the various incarnations of the Ottawa football franchise. Those two at the top were two of my favorites. With Tucker caught a lot of passes for Russ Jackson. Yeah, certainly Ottawa football legends. Speaking of which, the drop-off in wins will be the most for Ottawa from one season to another since 69-70. After Russ Jackson retired in 69, they had trouble replacing him. And yeah. History repeats itself. Is that what you're suggesting? So they win in 69, and he retires victorious. Won again in 73, but it took a little time to get back in the winner's circle. So we're through three quarters here. 10-point Montreal lead. drink for that. Alouette's lead by 10 after three quarters here. And you're seeing a record setting night in the Canadian football oh, league. It Ford. certainly has been. Some people may look at this game as not having a lot of meaning. The big record for Montreal kicker Boris Beattie tying a record with three kickoff singles, Chris, in the same game. Well, he does have the strongest leg in the league. I, I'm surprised it hadn't happened earlier, but yeah, he's, uh, he's been proving them to with the win tonight. Absolutely. Dave Ridgeway, Sean Fleming was the last to do it in 1997 with uh, with Edmonton. Trevor Kenner, also one of uh, one of those with a share of the mark. You were a wealth of information. We've still got a quarter to go. Uh, so far, so good for the Alouettes. Uh, they're playing well. They have the lead and. Uh, been able to avoid the injury bug so far. But the Red Blacks have a fourth quarter here to try and end this 10 game drought and give their fans something to cheer 
about before the season is done. Well, it is always your goal to win your last game of the season, regardless of, of circumstance. Very few teams have the opportunity to do it. It's not necessarily the way you want to do it. Iron a crosser and... Another catch for Caleb Hawley. And an injured Alouette. It's Antonio Simmons down. Smiled when you mentioned that. Dick Irvin, longtime partner. His father was a legendary coach in the NHL, and that was his message every year. Never lose your last game at home. That's right. These fans have waited a long time. The only home win this year came in the home opener against Saskatchewan. And tremendous fans here in Ottawa yep. as well. I mean, we've said it many times over the years, but one of the great atmospheres in the Canadian Football League. Yeah, Red it was a 44-41 shootout that night. Dominic Davis prevailing, and we got to see Cody Fajardo at the controls of the Saskatchewan Rough Riders at his first start of what has been an outstanding player season in Saskatchewan for him. And Simmons remains down, so we'll step aside. Ottawa threatening to cut into this 10-point lead. featuring the brand new single, Old Country Soul. Listen now on Apple Music. Antonio Simmons to the sidelines at second and one, and a sneak by Jennings. And did he get there? And the signal is the first down. And Will Art will check back in at the controls. A 10-point deficit, but knocking at the door here, back in the red zone for the Red Blacks. Down and Art into the back of the end zone, stretching out, and RJ Harris incomplete, almost made a circus catch up against Jamar Jones. And last second burst to the football when it's in the air. Harris is lined up out wide. On the left side, just a straight go route. Yep. And we got a challenge from the yeah. Red Black sidelines. Yeah, Rick there's Campbell a, there's wants to have another look. I think they have a case for pass interference Ottawa's here. challenging that there was defensive pass interference on the previous play on their receiver. We'll review the play. Looks like there were a couple of bumps from Jones beyond the five yards. So the command center will take another look at this. Pass interferences or not. It all comes down to this. The Rugby World Cup final takes place tomorrow morning. The top ranked nations of the world, England and South Africa, battle to be crowned world champions. Action kicks off at 445 Eastern, 145 Pacific, or available on demand only on TSM. After review, we have defensive pass interference. Montreal, number 33. Ball will be placed at the one-yard line. First down, Ottawa. Thank you. 
So again, here we see R.J. Harris, the wide man. He's running down that sideline, outside release on the go route. You saw a little bump there, another bump there. In the end zone that leads to this call and the placement of the ball at the one yard line. So Jonathan Jennings of the short yardage group back in for the Red Blocks as they hunker down here and try to punch it in. Left side Jennings, easy touchdown. Flag comes down, will it be offside defense? Offside, Montreal. The penalty's declined. Touchdown. There you see the defensive player lined up in the neutral zone. That's the offside call. As Jonathan Jennings collects his second touchdown of the season and of the night. Roland Jones, who's lined up offside. Oh, I got two toes. Right now, one. That's two. Right now, one. That's two. Ward missed the convert. Greg Reed going to try and bring it out. In some difficulty. But now. Exhausted. Throw it across, and it's Lalava. They're going to call forward lateral, and that will take the two points off the board. Offside pass, Montreal during the convert. There is no score on the play. Oh, it looked like they had something. Yeah, and I, I know why Reed's looking to lateral the ball because all the running around he did in the end zone, he's exhausted. And is looking for someone else to, who's got fresher legs to finish it for him. He's right here. The, the pass is fine because that's going back. But it says, as Jones is bobbling it and has Evan Johnson closing on him, he passes it off to DJ Lalama, but Lalama's in front of him. There you yep. see a forward pass. You know, I mean, if you're, if you're Montreal, you may try to make the argument that Jones never had control of the ball, that it's a uh, big bobble, but. Almost the second time in as many weeks that we have seen one return. Janarian Grant did it for Winnipeg last week. Bola Combo getting attention on the sidelines. And just getting back to the missed kick, a big miss by Lewis Ward. Is it, that convert would have made it. Yeah. A three point game and had them within a field goal. Well, you don't like seeing that with Lacombo. Not much weight on that ankle. Important guy. the sidelines yeah there were a few Montreal players involved in what appeared to be a, a disagreement down there Jones and Reed as well were involved in that well, let's take a look at how this started Like Najee Murray and Boris Beattie were trying to calm levels down, but just before that, there's a 
conversation between he and Jones and Reed that handshakes look to get a little heated, but yeah, just the heat of the moment as you saw there was exchange kind of hugs and handshakes over there. You're right, Doc. Costly Miss Convert. Four point lead. And Julian Grand on the return. Dropped around the 31 yard line. And back to work is Matthew Schultz. Well, we talked earlier, Chris, about sort of the, the value of getting these meaningful reps for some of the other players on your roster quarterback. Matthew Schultz most notably you know not necessarily the worst thing to to get him in a situation where where he's in a tight game pressure situation trying to manage the clock pull out a, a win and so on opportunities you can't really give your backup quarterback during the season that answer up around the 50 yard line Schultz on target and it's a 19 yard pickup Absher's got seven catches of the night. Yeah, Dante Absher sending the message that should anybody go down before or during the playoffs, he's ready to go. And just one catch in his debut last week, but did a great job building on that tonight. Six foot three, 180. Williams inside gets tripped up. After about four, and do we have another injury? One red black down, and slow to get up is the right guard. So Uko is okay, and just checking to see if it's Sean Jamison that's feeling the effects of that last play as well. He's a Western guy, Chris. He's going to shake it off and stay in the game. But you've been getting him out just to make sure he's ready for next week. He doesn't look comfortable. No, he doesn't. He went down hard and hobbling back up to the line. For a lot of one reference a game. <laughs> Schultz. Pumps and now he'll take off and he'll run for the first down. Down to the 45 yard line. And right, he took he's a, a little hit. slow to get up, too. Yeah, it looked like he might have got caught in the back of the head as he was going down. Here at Kahari Jones at halftime, say that we would see Antonio Pipkin. Might be the last series for Schultz. Yeah, Pipkin, the man who was the Alouette's opening day starter. Yeah. He got dinged in Edmonton and the Owls' first game of the season opened the door for Vernon Adams, who led a comeback that fell just short, but it was sort of the beginning of a great year to be for Vernon Adams. Williams trying to bounce it outside, nothing doing as he gets dragged down by Avery Ellis. Second and long. Sticks getting into field goal range here. Robert Lucier, the inside man on that side. I'll say beside him, by the way, former Laval quarterback Hugo Richard, number six in the game, playing a little bit of slot. He was the Vanier Cup winning quarterback last fall. 
been with the Alouettes, was in as a training camp as a quarterback, has been on their practice roster, taking some reps at other positions as well. Williams head to the edge. Jarvian Williams down inside the five. Touchdown. 35-yard touchdown burst. His first in the Canadian Football League. I feel like I've spent so much of this season talking about the young talent, the skill guys in particular on offense for these Montreal Alouettes. They're demonstrating not only that they have skill, but they have depth as well. You look at Absher and Williams getting their first CFL touchdowns here tonight, quitting themselves very well given the opportunity. Matthew Schultz as well. There's the scoring drive. Six plays, 79 yards. And the convert from Boris Beatty. So now it's an 11-point lead. Great run for Jarvion Williams. 35 yards to Peter. Maybe it's the sun of that sun on you. I feel like burning up the afternoon. From mic'd up players to behind the scenes action, it's CFL Wired. There's a party at the heater, you're freezing your butt off over here. Money, 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 money! We're gonna get that thousand a day, baby! If we had a heater, there'd be a party here too. <laughs> get CFL Wired, 10.30 Eastern, 7.30 Pacific, only on TSN. Logan from the 10. To the 30 yard line. Dwayne, we want to send out best wishes to a Red Black season ticket holder who is not able to be here tonight. He has been diagnosed with stage four cancer. Brian Moore, who's been a Red Black season ticket holder since. The Red Blacks got into the league. He was usually sitting with his son Jeremy in section double E. And Brian, all the folks in the section wanted to say they miss you tonight. And we all wish you well. There's Enoch Mwamba with a tackle on Jermenic Smith. And the middle linebacker with his eighth tackle of the night. So at 92 for the season for the top defensive player on the Alouettes in 2019. Second down out of the backfield, it's Crockett. And Crockett's got a first down up at the 44. This game. He carries 46 yards on the ground. Four-man rush. Hart taking a shot incomplete. Of course, when these two teams met, their last meeting went to overtime. There's Antonio Pipkin warming up on the Alouette sidelines. In that game, Devontae Dedman was the major story. And he sure was. Unfortunately injured. Can't finish the year, but a guy that you file away for next season. Dedman, a special night. Maybe the best touchdown of the season. Here's Smith dancing around at midfield as a first down. Well, Dedman clearly establishing himself as one of the top two returners in CFL history from William and Mary. Yeah, that other guy's pretty good, though. <laughs> <laughs> yes, Pinball Clemens did just fine. Nice move there from Germany Smith. Yeah, to quick. The defender miss. Here's the screen, Crockett again, and Crockett crashes down to about the 46-yard line. Let's see where they mark it, and to get to the 45 for a first down. 
Yeah, it looks like they're moving the chains. Red Blacks actually with more net yards in the game than the Alouettes. But with five minutes to go, down by 11. Short drop, first option not there, so they check it down. Crockett to the 40, has five more. A nice adjustment by Willard to find his check down under pressure and turn that into a positive play with a defender all over him. And I've got him as the best quarterback out of Fort McMurray. <laughs> That's where he had his first taste of Canadian football. That's doing your homework. No, it sure is. Second and six, we're going to again here. Crockett unable to shake DJ Lalama, who's had a big night defensively. That's his 11th tackle. Third down upcoming, and they send out Lewis Ward. Uh, DJ Lalama in 2016, he led. Canadian University football in tackles on route to winning the President's Trophy. Ottawa's called timeout here. Timeout, Montreal. Well, Montreal, they pointed Ottawa's way, but it is Montreal who was one man short. And Dominic Termanson comes on late. And that kind of thing will get addressed before the playoffs start. Yeah, clean up all the mistakes now. For the big matchup with Edmonton next weekend. 16,000 seats sold already for that game, anticipating a sellout for the Eastern semifinal. We know that matchup. We'll need tomorrow to sort out another miss for Ward. First the convert, now the field goal. Greg Reed dropped at the five-yard line. Not sure where the Western semifinal is going to be yet. To be determined tomorrow. Big day of CFL action ahead. Not many games in that young man's career that he's missed more than one kick in the same game. Yeah. Again, Super Saturday tomorrow. Rough Riders are trying to nail down first in the West. That matchup against the Eskimos. Argos and the Ticats. Hamilton's last test before the Eastern Final. And then the Stampeders and Lions to wrap up the CFL regular season. And will that be a game Calgary needs to finish first. Oh, Antonio Pipkin comes on as expected to lead the Montreal Alouettes offense. Should just add that we know Calgary's going to need to win that game for a home playoff spot. Yeah, amazing how tight Things have remained in the West right down to this final weekend. Calgary's had a home playoff game every season since the 2011 campaign. The Winnipeg Blue Bombers with a bye here in week 21. They will be the most interested observers in the country, I would suggest. Here's Jarvion Williams bringing it back out to the 16-yard line. He had the 35-yard touchdown run and now has 11 carries of the game and up to 66 yards. Well, and there's a look at the Montreal offensive line. And one of their global players, Diego Kuhlman. Back up old lineman getting some late game action here. Sneak for the first down. 
Coolman up, plow the way, and we've hit the three-minute warning here at TD Place. The Nissan Titan player of the game brought to you by the Nissan Titan. It's ranked number one in quality by J.D. Power. Well, he came into this game looking to demonstrate that he was playoff ready. Well, you watch Vernon Adams in the first half of this ball game, 13 of 16. A couple of touchdown strikes. Full command of the offense, escaping the rush, recognizing oncoming blitzes, giving a very, indi very clear indication that he is ready for that East semifinal at home in Montreal next Sunday. Finishes just shy of 4,000 yards for the season, 24 touchdown passes, and what appears will be a 10 and 5 record, unless the Red Blacks are the cardiac kids tonight. Go back and take a look at the work of our man, Diego Kuhlman. Good job run blocking, good drive there. Again, the Alouette's global player selected. The 12th overall pick in the CFL's Mexican League draft this year. Kevin Brown not right then, so the athletic therapy staff comes on to help him to the sidelines. I don't think they've announced a Global Player of the Year award. It will likely come in the next few years. Please reset the game clock to two minutes and 50 seconds. 250. I think Theatric Hansen would be the man this year. Hey, Hansen making his way into that defensive line rotation for the Winnipeg Blue Bombers, contributing on special teams as well. Second and eight. Intended target, Malcolm Carter. So the Red Blacks gonna get it back here with two and a half to go. Next week, it'll be Vernon Adams against Trevor Harris. Last year, Harris with six touchdown passes in the Eastern Final. As an Ottawa Red Black. Logan awaits. Off the side of Beatty's foot. And here's Logan at midfield. Finds a crease. Steph Logan. Inside the 20 and finally bumped out. By Jamor Jones, you wonder if that's the last time we see Steph Logan return a kick in the Canadian Football League. If it is, it's an appropriate way to remember. That could be going out with a bang, St Steph Logan. Demonstrating he's still got some wheels. Number three kick returner in Canadian Football League history. Number three in pro football history. I, I don't know if you're going to find a faster 38 year old anywhere. I'm only 38 years old. Still running. <laughs> Spencer Moore, slow to get to the sidelines. Yeah, fullback and special team stalwart for these Alouettes. 
something you rarely hear in pro sports. Only 38. I'm only 38. Oh, after that return, it's first and 10 to 16. Pass caught. So not to the five. Driven out around the three-yard line. And remember, a missed convert, a missed field goal. Otherwise, they'd be going in to try and tie the game. Well, and regardless of outcome here, the Ottawa Red Blacks have giving their fans something to cheer about tonight, demonstrating some fight, tooth and nail, right down to the wire in this ball game. They're Alouette getting attention here on the sidelines. Termitson. Well, this is Injury to Tremanson is going to bring Bola Combo back into the ball game. He got nicked up a little bit earlier. Yeah, that's good to see that you probably don't want La Combo back in the game, but knowing yeah. he can come back is the good news. Because he wasn't putting a lot of weight on that ankle a short time ago. Sinopoli with his first 100-yard game. John Crockett dropped at the one-yard line again. No running back for the Red Blacks has hit the end zone this year. Well, John, Jonathan Jennings now in to run that short yardage offense. Be the sneaker will Crockett be rewarded for his efforts? Well, it's going to be Jennings stacked up. Does he get there? No. Driven back, it'll be third and goal. Patrick levels on the scene. Siante Evans in support. And a little scuffle in the end zone. Tempers have been flaring all night long, and the Alex Fontana involved. The third and goal from the one. All looking to keep their hopes alive here. Crockett or Jennings? It will be Jennings. Flag down, touchdown. There you see. <laughs> that Vaughan is the most Roland inexcusable Jones. penalty Offside. for the CFL. Montreal, well, number 91. That penalty's declined. Touchdown. Especially when you're one of the guys lined up right in front of the ball. Did it twice on the last two series. When the ball's at the one, your hand has to be on the white or behind. They'll go for two. Seven for 11 on two point converts this year. Aren't back in to run it. Crockett reaching. Did he get there? No signal. And they might have to review it. He stretched out. Looked like he. Potential scoring plays are reviewed, so we may just have to go right to the command center for this. The previous scoring play is under review by the command center. 
and he stayed up, but he, I think he's got it, doesn't he? He managed, I think, to keep himself horizontal and above ground. Maybe just long enough. Still up, still up, still uh, up. I think he's got it. I think he broke the front plane of the goal line before he hit the ground. Like he said, if you're not going to let me get a touchdown, least I can do is get two. And it looks like he did by the nose of the football. Well, we need confirmation. Here's Dave Foxcroft. After review, the two-point convert is good. That's a three-point game. Still time on the clock. So the two-point convert. They made up for the missed convert earlier. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. So that'll pull them within three. As you can see Crockett very closely watching the big screen at the far end of the field. He knew right away. Sorry. But, so well, uh, a missed convert loomed large. Right now, a missed field goal right. that right. came after that. Looms even larger. Two points the other way. But so true. Now, are you kicking deep or are you kicking short? With 141. With 141, they've got time to, to kick deep, put it in the hands of their defense, and play for a shorter field. The alignment here suggests that they're, to me, that they're kicking short. They are. Up for grabs. And what a great play to reel it in by Winnicky. Knocked it down and then corralled it. And the other part of the difference in this football game that we should be coming back to, yeah. the record-setting performance by Boris Beattie. Well, that is the difference in the ball game right now. Three singles on kickoffs. R.J. Harris looked like he got a hand on that, but Wenicky. Yeah, good effort right by Harris. Yeah, knocked it away. This rough, but he just couldn't get back to the ball before Wenicky did. So the Alouettes have the ball at the red-black 49-yard line. Williams the ball carrier, not much. Be second and long for Pipkin and the Owls. And the fans that have stayed have been making some noise here. They believe. Won their home opener, and the Red Blacks trying to come back to win their season finale. Second and ten. Ball on the carpet. Williams back on the Alouette side of midfield. Pipkin had trouble with the snap, and then... A little trouble handing it off to Jarvion Williams. Well, he loses it on the exchange. Just bobbles the football. Maybe after the chilly it. night, but I'm surprised that he didn't just tuck it or even fall on it. That under these circumstances, that he still tried to make that handoff with the defense bearing down. Red Blacks with 32 on the board. Their first 30 point plus performance since that overtime win against the Alouettes back on August 2nd. Will we be going to overtime tonight? Logan. That is a that one clutch, out at the five. clutch punt. Big time kick for Boris Beattie. So the field is a long one after a 51-yard punt into the corner. That's playoff ready. Yeah, making sure that the 
Only 38-year-old Steph Logan, who's had a couple of big returns tonight, didn't get a chance to shorten that field. So they mark it at the two. So they need about 60 yards of real estate here. how his team feels about him. Third down. 
17 of 25 for 161 of the game. And that interception. If you joined us late, first half, Dominic Gate Davis before injured, 16 of 18 for 155. And uh, awkward handoff, a fumble, and that might have just summed up the whole season right there. Alouettes take it over on a second consecutive series turnover. And a final 18 seconds to run off the clock. Base, base. You came back out to take a knee. Yeah, that's it. <laughs> Well, here you'll see signals crossed in the backfield. Art turns right, running back goes left. Leads to an awkward exchange and eventually a fumble. And we'll see the Alouettes in victory formation. Looking for, as they secure win number 10 on the season. And Adams back out there to close it out. There's all the Alouette fans that moved down to the front rows in behind the Alouette pitch. That defense was celebrating with them. Now the whole team can. Montreal finishes 10 and 8 with a 42-32 victory against the Red Blacks here in Ottawa tonight. Final tune-up for Montreal as they get set for the Eastern semifinal next week against Edmonton. Edmonton, Saskatchewan kickoff Super Saturday tomorrow, 4 o'clock Eastern. Then it's the Argos and Ticats. And we'll wrap up the regular season with the Stampeders against the Lions at BC Place. 11 consecutive losses to finish for the Red Blacks. But for y'all, headed to the playoffs. And we're headed to Sports Center. So long from the nation's capital.